Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman here with my co-host Justin Warren, and you're watching theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Media's live production of AWS reInvent 2017. Happy to welcome back to the program, Rishi Yadav, who's the CEO of Zetabyte, and, and Bart Hickenlooper, uh, who is the SVP of Client Services. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Stu. So, so, Rishi, yesterday, you were on the other set with John Furrier and with Justin, and we were really excited to really launch Zettabytes, help you uh, bring the company out. We've known uh, InfoObjects in your company for a while, so, uh, you know, of course we want people to go check out the other interview, but in today's kind of hybrid, multi-cloud world, we've seen Amazon kind of slowly moderating a little bit the way they discuss it, but why don't you bring us inside a little bit. What are you hearing from customers, and what kind of led to uh, the creation of Zettabytes? Yeah, so what we are hearing from customers is that, I mean, there's a lot of talk about the cloud and the AWS, right? The challenge is that what I discussed yesterday also was that how do I take those baby steps towards adoption of the cloud? Yeah. And that's where the challenge comes, right? On one side they say, you know, everything on-prem is bad, everything on cloud is good. I mean, those kind of statements are okay, I mean, but somebody who has got billions of dollars of business running, right, for them it doesn't make any sense they want to have logical steps and they also want to have, with every step, what value they're adding. Yeah. Yeah. But, but we always hear, you know, right, we, we dig in, it's like, you know, all, all in on any one thing. Oh, come on, you're using various SaaS providers, you probably have multiple cloud providers. Yes, you've still got something sitting in the back end, uh, you know, of your data center or many things, and that migration, you know, takes time. What kind of strategy and tactics do you hear customers doing that, you know, gets that a bite engaged? Yeah, well, what we see in most enterprises is an effort to really modernize their applications, right? And they want to make those so that they're cloud native, leveraging really the innovation that's taken place in the cloud. And so that application modernization is really what's driving an enterprise uh, to do some things and move quickly to the cloud. It's no longer the economics of moving to the cloud, but that innovation engine that can be really ignited with those technologies. Getting there from their legacy platforms is a little tricky. They need a development cycle that works in a hybrid fashion to really go cloud native with those applications. So when they're starting off on that journey, where are you finding customers starting with? Like what are the applications that they, they do first and what are the functions that they, they use from AWS? Like are they going with just EC2 type things? Are they using S3 for storage? What do they start with? So, uh, and, and that's a good point that uh, with the first uh, phase of the cloud adoption, yeah. most of the work was on uh, IAS. I mean, you just, whatever you have on-prem, you just put that on the cloud, yeah. right? And then obviously you use S3 or storage and things like that, right? And, uh, and that's where there was a lot of talk. I mean, if you remember a few years back, everybody would say, cloud is not cheap, cloud is, uh, cloud is costly, and I was like, as Bart said, it's not about economics, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it's always about convenience, it's always about the value add, yeah. right? And especially when enterprises started getting into the cloud, uh, started adopting cloud a few years back, hmm. that's where those things became uh, 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 very important, right? Because that's what they wanted. I mean, you just cannot save someone 20% in an infrastructure cost, and that may not even come, right? And say yeah. that it's worth uh, the ad adoption of the cloud. Yeah. yeah. So we were talking yesterday about the the hundred services that like the the number of services that you as an organization have to wrap your brain around, and one of the things that Zettabytes helps with that is to kind of give you some focus. So again, what what are the things that Zettabytes is focusing on that they find that customers actually really really want from cloud? Because Amazon is so huge, making sense of the whole thing is is quite tricky. Yeah. When you talk about application modernization, you know. If, if you have a monolithic application, EC2 and S3 are yeah. great. If you're going to migrate it, you can do that. What we're seeing is really a switch to DevOps for application development, yeah. microservices development that leverage certain platform services from Amazon that are specific to enable a, an application. And those are things like Lambda, Kinesis, right? Uh, Elasticsearch and you can write microservices that consume those services in addition to your traditional storage and compute and really get cloud native. 
So we've selected those services on our platform to help with that application modernization and really enable a customer to make uh, applications with microservices enablement. So, you know, Wikibon's been looking at many years, really, what, you know, what's happening that's kind of the transformation in the data center. Uh, the research we put out a few years ago uh, is what we call true private cloud, because yeah. we said what was happening, you know, kind of the virtualization plus, I mean, look, love virtualization, I spent, a, you know, 15 years uh, on, on that wave, but it wasn't enough. And even when we started you know, simplifying and even some automation on there, that application journey and how do we get ready for yeah. modern applications, even in, uh, you know, I, I worked a lot on kind of the HCI wave. Yeah. It was, let's modernize our infrastructure and then we'll worry about the application stuff later and maybe it's not a fit. So what's different now? What are the toolings available? Why is now, you know, can I put that stuff? I mean, it's cloud native, isn't it? That means it should all live in a public cloud. No or could it live you know, in, in many places? So I think, I think that's a great point. So three uh, pieces of the puzzle, the infrastructure, data, and the applications. Uh, so there has been a lot of talk about infrastructure and not having infrastructure. Data, every other company in the Bay Area is backup and restore company, <laughs> right? Nobody's talking about the applications. Yes, they are SaaS players, right? We are like, okay, we'll just host application for you and uh, uh, and, you, and uh, you don't have to worry about anything else. Yeah. But what about a lot of these legacy applications which have been built over the last 20, 30 years, right? Nobody's talking about that. Yeah. Everybody talks about greenfield applications, right? Yeah. Whatever you start new, right? Everything is going to be the cloud, it's going to be cloud native, everything is awesome. And then clients say, yes, but I already invested $500 million <laughs> in the applications in the last 10 years. What's yeah. going to happen to them? Yeah, like I like to say that the first 80% of writing software is putting the bugs in, and then the second 80% of writing software is taking them out again. So if you have to completely start with these you know, core business applications that are generating revenue, there's a lot of risk there in going to something brand new. And I mean, we have uh, Andy Jassy talking about if I was starting the company again today, I'd go completely all serverless, I think, really? Right now, in 2017, is it, is it really that established and that great? I mean, what, what do you, what's your take on that? For, for an enterprise that has this investment already, should they be going completely all into serverless or should they be picking off some of these other more mature services, do you think? Yeah, I would say uh, it would be really application specific. If it's traditional transactional, uh, you may or may not want to go serverless, right? Uh, because you've got that relational database really kind of structure around it. Uh, if it's a modern application and you're a company that has, for example, a brand new mobile application, uh, you're going to want to leverage things like Lambda in that application development so you can trigger the correct service yeah. uh, to spin up uh, in that application. So I think modernization is really specific to the use case. What we're seeing is a digital transformation in most companies yeah. where they're really requiring some newer applications to leverage PaaS services like Lambda, Elasticsearch, Kinesis, and other things. Yeah. So, Rishi, one, one of the things you know, we, we've heard from customers for, for many years is they say that they'd like to have uh, really the same in their data center as in the public cloud. We did a survey years ago and you know, every, you know, it was like 80% said that and then say, what do you have? Well, I've got VMware here and I've got AWS there. So, is it about having the whole stack? Are APIs enough? How much commonality do you need? How, how, do, how, how does Zettabytes look at this and how, how do you help customers kind of bridge this model? Yes, sir, absolutely. So, number one is that the VMware type of solution is still pretty much, uh, uh, I like uh, VMware, but it's pretty much uh, uh, infrastructure as a service based, yeah. right? Second thing is, the region we have come up with uh, our platform is that few core services uh, and for few key workloads. Yeah. IoT is being one of them, low latency workloads being another of them. Uh, few workloads which need special type of security and governance which clients are used to from last 20 years, right? So yes, AWS has amazing security and governance, no doubt about that. But still, part of the workload they may want to run locally and they should at least have that freedom. Right. So only those part of workloads are going to be run on Zettabyte's appliance, but 
rest of but uh, the api compatibility will provide complete so whether you want to run it on jettabytes or on aws most of the workloads are going to run on aws and that you can uh, run from our platform yeah i i, I want to key off a word you mentioned there you mentioned appliances so we've seen lots of solutions over the last decade done quite well with appliances uh, you know we talk about kind of the hci talk about and kind of the back of recovery lots of things there but you know it's a software world now you know heck serverless you know andy jazzy says we'll build serverless uh, Wine appliance, talk a little bit about kind of the go-to-market, what do people get today, how do they buy it, you know, what, what, why does that make sense for your customers? Yes, absolutely, Bart will add it uh, more from uh, the sales perspective, yeah. but appliance from the optimization perspective is perfect. So in our case, yes, we have figured out a spec which is perfect, uh, the perfectly optimized uh, for to run our software platform, and we can provide it to the clients. If they want to have the similar stack uh, build themselves, that's perfectly okay. But the idea is that hardware has equally important role to play as the software has, right? Yeah, so, so that's where, yeah. When you think about the platform services that we have, like S3, RDS, and others, you definitely need hardware to support a real workload. Yeah. Uh, and for us to really standardize on something that someone can do, true development, with that depth on the platform is really critical. They can do, you know, you can go to GitHub and get open source uh, S3 and work around it, but it's a mock. Yeah. Really what you need is a platform to develop the application. On the other thing is, I worked for Cisco for 10 years and the channel there is extremely powerful. Yeah. With companies like CDW, WWT, uh, the route to market there is really compelling for a combined solution. And I think part of the reason you've seen success with those combined solutions is the customers are used to a service model where it's one throat to choke yep. uh, on those types of platforms. And the channel is a trusted advisor. It's a great way for us to go to market. Yeah, to, just to give, give my you know, two cents on that, you know, people kind of conflate uh, that you know, we've had some commoditization of uh, you know, what, what's happening in infrastructure. Doesn't mean you just grab stuff off the shelf. I wrote an article four years ago. Yeah. AWS infrastructure is hyper-optimized. Yeah. If, if you went to the Tuesday night keynote, oh my gosh, they spend uh, way more on hardware than anybody else in this ecosystem, I'm sure, and spend more margins. So it's not that you have IP in hardware, if I'm my understanding, it's you're making sure you've got your software's match for the package, I can do it, somebody else can do it, right. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yes, yeah, so absolutely, I think, I think that part is very, very important that uh, uh, one uh, throat to choke, uh, uh, one uh, company which supports everything. So in our case, yes, if you want to have your own hardware, then uh, uh, then you, you can do that, but in our case, if you take the whole appliance from us, then we are providing you complete support, right? Uh, hardware, operating system, as well as the software, right? And we're, uh, in a certain sense, we're really trying to, like you said, to match the performance of those optimized environments on AWS for our clients, so they get a similar experience from our platform uh, that they would get on AWS, and, you know, if they build something on Zettabytes and then deploy on AWS, they should get the same experience. Okay, uh, I want to give you the last word. Uh, you know, sure, lots of customers coming by your booth, which is not far from where, where we're sitting right now. What are some of the key things they're hearing? What's, what's getting them kind of excited, interested, that, that they want to follow up more with? Yes, yeah, so I think uh, most of the customers, when we talked to we said, okay, uh, are you using AWS? They say yes, because they are at the reInvent. <laughs> then say, okay, how far you are in the AWS adoption? And that's where uh, the devil comes in the details, okay? Yeah, these applications we, are, we have been able to migrate, these we are not able to migrate, you know, we are building uh, our expertise around it and things like that, and the question comes, do you really want to go too deep into figuring out the problems which the vendors have solved, or you'd rather focus on your business problems? Yeah. So that's what I would say, as I said, uh, one package, one platform, where you get to focus on your business problems and we take care of the rest. Yeah, and I think, you know, in the keynote yesterday, Andy Jassy said it's all about the analytics, and what we're hearing is, we've given a lot of thought to putting together a platform that supports big data and analytics in addition to the AWS abstraction that we've done. So those analytics workloads are really intriguing to people that are talking with us, uh, our support of machine learning, converting what it may be a traditional Spark job into a Lambda function uh, is really something people are raising their eyebrows about. Bart Hickenlooper, Rishi Adav, 
asking how deep are we into AWS? Well, here at theCUBE we're about 60 interviews in, which means we have a few more hours left of great interviews here. So for Justin Warren, I'm Stu Miniman. Thank you so much for watching theCUBE.